Spotlight is a production of CTNY, the Catholic television network of Youngstown. It seeks to spotlight people, places, and events from around the Diocese of Youngstown that promote the new gospel of joy called for by Pope Francis. Your program host is Father James Corda. Hello and welcome to this edition of Spotlight. I'm Father Jim Corda. Today we're going to talk about St. Joseph the Provider Catholic School. And joining me is Cheryl Jablonski, who is the principal. Welcome to our show. Thank you, Father. And also Father Mike Swires, who is the president of the school. Welcome. Uh, thank you, Father Corda. Before we get into our discussion actually about uh, St. Joseph the Provider School, let's talk a little bit about yourselves first to give the folks a little uh, personal touch uh, to the whole story. Uh, Cheryl, you've been in education for a long time. Tell us a little bit about your educational background. Okay, I graduated from Cardinal Mooney High School in 1973. Um, I went to uh, Youngstown State, and I also received um, my master's degree at Youngstown State. I've been working in the Catholic schools ever since. I started at Immaculate in 1992, was at St. Matthias for several years, 20 years I think it was, before they closed. And then um, I went to St. Joseph the Provider, and I've been there about eight years now. I always like to ask someone in the Catholic school system, what keeps them there? Um, right now, I believe in the mission that St. Joseph the Provider um, School is all about, and that's why I'm there. Well, we're going to talk a little bit more about their particular mission in a moment. Okay. We want to give uh, Father Mike a little opportunity mm -hmm. to share some personal uh, tidbits about himself. Well, I grew up in Poland and graduated from uh, Poland High School. Then after graduation, I went on to uh, St. Gregory Seminary in Cincinnati, and then they closed. Went to the Pontifical College Josephinum in Columbus, where we saw men studying, and then to Mount St. Mary's in Cincinnati, and uh, after that I was ordained. Served at St. Rose and Gerard, Holy Family in Poland, St. Christine's, and then St. Joseph the Provider, and St. John the Baptist, and St. Elizabeth Parishes in Camel. Well, you know, St. Joseph the Provider School has a long history. And um, it's changed over the years, obviously, like, like many of our Catholic schools, in particular those in, in cities. Uh, how uh, had St. Joseph the Provider School changed in your tenure there at St. Joseph the Provider in Camel? Well, St. Joseph the Provider originally was St. John the Baptist Polish, and that was on Warhurst Road in Camel. And that, it started, the school started in the 40s by the, uh, by the pastor and then also the uh, Polish Franciscan nuns from Chicago. Then they moved over to Porter Avenue and changed the name to St. Joseph the Provider. Uh, the school was very successful and many uh, wonderful people graduated from the school, um, including our own Monsignor Zura graduated from our school and other people as well. But the, the school's demographics changed, the city's demographics changed, and as time went on, uh, we noticed that we were having more children come in from the city than from the city of Camel. And with uh, the Camel, parishes were starting to merge together to form one church, one parish community, and it would have been very, very hard for them to support a school, especially with most of the children coming in from the inner city of Youngstown. So Bishop Murray and I, I had gone to Bishop Murray and told him what was going on, and we both decided the best for the school to succeed and to, to continue to grow was to move it into the city of Youngstown. And so one afternoon, Bishop Murray and I went around and looked at various different schools that were empty, and we decided that St. Anthony, a Padua parish, had a beautiful school building that hadn't been used for like 18 years. Uh, needed a lot of cleaning and a lot of updating, but we all accomplished that through the hard work of the teachers and the staff, Mr. Jablonski, myself, and other people. We got the job done. Cardinal Mooney High School uh, helped us to move out of our old location, and then Ursuline High School helped us to move into the new location. Uh, so it was a combined effort of a lot of different people, and, and it did succeed, and it, it's working very well. Well, let's talk now about the um the particular mission of St. Joseph the Provider School. Uh, Cheryl, in your experience, what is that mission all about and why is it so important for us as church to have this mission in our schools? Well, we're 
actually educating students who are not Catholic, but we do it because we are Catholic. And we um, have an opportunity to spread the good news of Jesus and teach like he did. He didn't, um, it didn't matter to him who you were. He took care of you no matter what. So we get that opportunity. Some of the students, or I should say most of our students are not Catholic. 98% are not Catholic, but most of them are living in poverty at one level or another. And so they haven't had a lot of opportunities until they've come to our school. I know uh, in my younger uh, pastorates, I was at Immaculate Conception mm -hmm. and you were there. Uh, we call that a mission school. Uh, I would imagine St. Joseph the Provider mm -hmm. is a mission school, right, right. primarily because it carries on the mission of the church. Uh, and so we don't have a necessarily an obligation just to um, educate Catholics, but to educate everybody and anybody. In the same way uh, as pastors uh, in our particular polity, we really have provision for the souls of all baptized mm -hmm. people, whether you're Catholic or, or Protestant or Anglican or whatever. So there's that whole sense that this mission is, is really greater than, than all of us and truly universal. Uh, tell us a little bit about uh, some of the kids, uh, Father Mike, at St. Joseph the Provider School. Uh, what are they like? Uh, what do they bring to the school uh, besides what you offer them? Our kids come and they're very, they're not unique of, of children in any school, um, especially in the inner city. They're touched by poverty, many of the kids. Not all of them, but most of them. And their parents uh, are there. Some are being raised by guardians or grandparents, aunts, uncles, cousins. So it's a little bit different from some other school settings within, our, within the Diocese of Youngstown. But what we're called to do, as Cheryl said, is to, to proclaim the good news. Our children come and they're very hungry. They're hungry to, to learn. Uh, they're hungry to learn more about themselves. They're hungry to learn more about the world. And we open doors for them to show them different possibilities and all the things that can happen good in their life and to give them hope. Because maybe when you're in a situation of poverty, you lose faith, you lose hope. And planting those seeds, it continues through the years and it continues on to high school their dream is to go to a catholic high school then to college or even to a trade but we're there to and they always come back to say thank you and that's they're very grateful uh, very good kids and whenever anyone enters our building they always remark how friendly and welcoming and how good and the kids are well behaved we're going to talk a little bit more about that and also uh, the educational component uh, in the school, but we're going to take a quick break. So stay with us. We'll be right back. We are all important members of the St. Joseph the Provider School family. We come to school to learn and grow with God. We will use our talents to help ourselves and each other to learn to grow and show respect. Each of us will strive to be the best person we can be. We are to be members of the SJS family. We will succeed! Whoa, Light Moments. Here's Father Tom McSweeney. Rita Churchia moved to Millbrook, New York in 1989. At her regular job, she worked as a waitress. But on Saturdays, she sold homemade cookies, pies, and other treats at the local farmer's market. You see, Miss Churchia loved to bake, and as it turned out, people loved eating her baked goods. And three years later, Rita Churchia used her life savings to open a bakery. She didn't get much sleep until she could afford to hire some help, but the hard-working and gifted baker did get customers who were loyal enough to stand on long lines for her pastries. So here's a recipe you might want to try. You combine talent, love for your work, and a willingness to take a risk and add to that years of hard work. And with a final dash of good luck, you too can create something delicious. This message from the Christophers. Hello, welcome back to Spotlight. We're talking about St. Joseph the Provider School. And I'd like to ask Cheryl a little bit about the educational component of the school. Uh, is there anything different 
in your school as uh, in comparison to other Catholic schools in this diocese? Well, we're still chartered by the state, so of course we have to teach all the um, requirements, but we also try to um, take into account all the students' um, home life, and we have to teach to the whole child, not just the subject. Some of them um, come in and they're not ready to sit down and learn reading and writing and math. So we tried to take all that into account. And this year we added um, what we call an individualized learning room where we have students from grades five to eight who are um, with one teacher all day and she's trying to catch them up a little bit. They've been, fall, you know, fell behind a little bit so there she's trying to catch them up. I would imagine that um, sometimes when school is out, for example, during the summer months, that it's a little difficult to get, in any school, to get kids back up to snuff. But when they come from a school that might be in um, whatever crisis situation it is to your school, then you obviously have uh, your hands full. But to have that component, which is really a valuable asset to, in the school. Mm -hmm. Let's also talk about religion in the school. It is a Catholic school. It so is. what do you do with religion in particular with non-Catholics, Father Mike? Well, religion's taught every day in all of the classes. Um, and even with the non-Catholic students, it's taught. And the children really do enjoy religion. They have so many questions about uh, the sacraments, and especially about Mass, and because we attend Mass every week. And uh, during May, we pray the rosary and all the sacramentals that so many of us have grown up with and hold dear to our hearts as Catholic people, the children are attracted to that, and it's something new, and it's another way for them to pray or to experience God's love, God's mercy, bring joy and hope into their lives. Um, so the teachers, the teachers that teach uh, uh, religion are Catholic. Um, in fact, the students that we had, uh, I had taught religion last year for uh, eighth grade and fifth grade, and, and the students scored very, very high on that, not just because of the teacher, but I think because they wanted to learn, and, and they were thirsty for that. They're thirsty, they know the Bible. Uh, it's very real in their life. And so you put all that together, and we have a very successful uh, religious ed program in our, in our school. Of course, uh, you know that as a mission school, um, there's a particular ministry that you have, but it's not um, to, to change them to become Catholic. That's not the mission of the school. And yet I would imagine that over the years you have some non-Catholic students and even their, their parents who might be interested in the faith. How do you address that situation? Well, um, Father Mike usually takes care of that, and we did indeed have someone that um, both his mother and um, the student converted to Catholicism. And I think it's just um, they see what we're trying to do, and they appreciate that, and so then that's what they, you know. We do pray with the children every day, every morning before we start school, every day before we leave school. So um, they're getting that in their lives, something that they need. I think they need that. Like Father said, the hope and you know, and something to rely on. And it's important we we plant the seeds, you know, we leave it up to the Lord, and God will, you know, bring those seeds if it's meant to be to to flourish in the church. Um, and it happens over and over, you know, throughout the years of the school's existence in so many different ways. And we even see that with uh, new students who are coming into the school. One I had already asked, can I be baptized? Can I belong to this parish community of St. Anthony's where the, the school is housed? So things are happening. But again, we plant the seeds and it, it comes. And I think ultimately, isn't that what Catholic education does? It plants the seeds and then it gives... Um, the students uh, something to build on in their own lives. And, and I would think that that's a, an important component at St. Joseph the Provider School, that you, you give them something that they can take with them, not only back to their family and their home, but in the future as they go on to high school and college and their own livelihood. Uh, how important is that component that they give back what, what's been given to them? 
Well, we do try to do some projects that the students participate in so that they can help others who are um, struggling also. We um, do hoops for heart and or jump rope for heart and we do um, for the Leukemia Association. Um, Father Brenz had a program, Souls for Souls, and where we were donating shoes to um, someone who needed shoes, and we did that program. Um, so we're trying to teach them, as well as like we recycle, we do the Cash for Cans campaign, and so we're trying to give them um, something they can do in the future so they can see that they're an important part and they have to help others as we're trying to help them. And it's, they're poor and they're coming from poverty, and yet they still give. They give what they can and how they can, and, and that's the rewarding thing to see that they all want to give. They want to give something. They want to be a part of something, and, and they see the good and the joy that comes from that. And that's very important to instill that because unless you instill a grateful heart in children, they're not going to have that grateful heart as they get older. Um, We've got a few minutes left in our second segment. I'd like to talk about uh, the parents' involvement. You know, in my experience uh, years ago in a mission school, the parents really weren't as involved as we would like for a number of reasons. They, many of them hold many jobs uh, or maybe their grandparents. And, and so what's the, um, uh, the component of uh, parent involvement in the school show? Um, we don't have a lot of parent involvement. However, we try to keep them informed and we want them to feel welcome in the school. So what we try to do is our teachers have to, have to call them. We ask them to call just to keep them informed as to how their students are doing so that they, those lines of communication stay open. Um, if there's an issue, I'll call the par parents and they always are very responsive to me. So they're not in the building, but yet I think we can call them and we know that they'll be there. We're going to talk a little bit more about um, different aspects of the school in our final segment, but we're going to take a quick break. Uh, stay with us. We'll be right back. I am Marinol. Je suis Marinol. I am Marinol. I believe that we are all connected to each other, and that it is the gift of compassion that unites us and makes us one. It doesn't matter what language, culture, or tradition we come from. We can share compassion wherever we are. Mary Knoll, an American Catholic organization of priests and brothers, has been reaching out to those in need for nearly 100 years in 26 countries throughout the world. Mary Knoll dedicates 86 cents of every dollar donated to their programs, and with your help, they can do more. Missionaries, workers, volunteers, supporters, we are all Mary Knoll. I am Mary Knoll. Yo soy Marino. I'm Father Mike. And I am Marino. 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 We are all important members of the St. Joseph the Provider School family. We come to school to learn and grow with God. We will use our talents to help ourselves and each other to learn to grow and show respect. Each of us will strive to be the best person we can be. We are proud to be members of the SJS family. We will succeed. Welcome back to our show. We're talking with Cheryl Jablonski and Father Mike Swires from St. Joseph the Provider School. I think the aspect that I'd like us to focus on in the final segment is uh, the volunteers. And I'm sure like, like any Catholic school, you rely on volunteers. What, what are the volunteers like and do you have enough volunteers at your school? I think we could always use more volunteers. Recently I went out to St. Michael's Parish in Canfield and did an appeal out there at the invitation of Father Hazel and uh, the amount of people, the, not only donations, but people who were involved and who wanted to do something, who wanted to help children, maybe they were a retired teacher and wanted to come to read 
or to uh, help tutor a student. Or uh, we had one lady who wanted to, she baked cookies and she just wanted to make cookies for the kids to give them a treat. And so volunteers are always needed in so many different ways, whether it be reading or helping to tutor. We have some members of our board, their, their spouses come in to tutor. Uh, so the opportunities there, and we're always looking, and other people are always welcome to come and, and to be a part of that school community in, in reaching out and, and changing children's lives. Let's talk, Cheryl, about, uh, Father mentioned about the board. What uh, role do they play within the structure of the school itself? Well, they have been very instrumental in helping with the fundraising, um, which is an important part of our um, school because we are not affiliated with any parish so it's up to us to kind of supplement our income to make sure that we can give the students everything that they need so um, they have been very helpful and very very supportive um, let's talk about that uh, fundraising component because as you mentioned uh, you aren't subsidized by a particular parish and so you rely on uh, the generosity of of uh, parishes and institutions around the, the entire diocese. What are some of the, the fundraiser events that you do have to not only raise money, but to heighten awareness for the mission of the school? We have small fundraisers that uh, consist of like dinners or stuffed cabbage dinner or uh, steak fries and things that a parish community would have in the life of the parish. But our big appeal, we have a, a general appeal every year and um, we budget for about $50,000. We've already surpassed that uh, for this calendar year. Uh, people have been very generous, and they want to know more. They want to help. They want to do what they can because, you know, the missions are here. The missions are overseas, but also uh, missions are here. Catholic schools were started for an immigrant popu population, and, and maybe we have to look at now we have a new immigrant population coming into our churches and in, into our cities. And now we're called to help them. Just as we made so many people in the past very successful, we have new children to, to, to help and, and to, and so that it requires money and it requires the generosity and the time and talent and treasure of so many different people. And we're just very thankful to, to everybody who has contributed. And everyone who contributes is remembered by the children at mass in our daily prayer or um, we have a, a thank you dinner, a, a breakfast dinner uh, during the year where they receive newsletters from myself and from uh, other people on the board. So it's keeping people in touch, letting them know what's going on and making them feel uh, a part of things because they are a big part of things. We are what we are because of the people who are standing behind us. I think the other component is uh, you uh, took over uh, a school building that was closed for almost 18 years. Mm -hmm. So there was significant work that you needed to do to get the building up to, to speed. Is there any part of the building, you know, the folks that are with us might know somebody or might um, have some desire to uh, help in, the, in regards to uh, the facility itself. Do you have opportunities for that as well? Oh, sure. Uh, usually in a school building, there's always small things that need to be fixed up, painted, repainted, painted again. Uh, so there's always opportunities uh, for a person to come and just uh, to help in whatever way. It, it's funny how God points them in our direction, but it it's always, it's never fails that when we need something, somebody always shows up and says, I can do that. And I would think also, uh, Cheryl, for the teachers, like supplies and things like that. I know uh, when I was in the mission school, many teachers bought their own supplies out of their own money. So if the folks that are with us want to help in that regards, what are some of the things that they could use? Oh boy. Well, actually, one of the uh, main things that the teachers want to work on is their classroom libraries. Mm -hmm. So if they would like to contribute books, that would be great. Um, and like you said, they do spend their own money. And they, have, they work, our teachers work all the fundraisers. They're there all the time. Um, we have a big one coming up um, in a couple weeks. We're doing our basket raffle and auction, and they'll be there working that too. So um, we depend on them for a lot of things. And we're trying to start a band too, mm -hmm. uh, instruments, musical instruments. And it helps the children, especially uh, people who are in poverty, it gives them the opportunity to express themselves. 
like in art, they excel in art, but also in music. And um, so we're looking at building in a, in a band now for the, our next school year. The other option, uh, I know many schools do this, where they have an adopt a student. Mm -hmm. Do you have a program oh, like sure, that as well? Sure. What if they're interested? What do they do, and who oh, do they contact? They just send a, a, your donation to the school uh, to my attention, and uh, we apply that to one of the children who are, um, we have children who do not receive the Ed Choice uh, scholarship. So it helps us to pay their t tuition. The other uh, component, and we talked about this um, before the taping, is that many of the students, uh, when they go home, don't have adequate food. And that's another component. Mm -hmm. Is there any uh, part of the program that people can assist with that regards? Um, right now, we don't have a program where we send food home. Um, we've been I'm fortunate that our cafeteria manager, um, we do have the breakfast and lunch program, but she also wrote for a grant um, that we have fruit. They have a uh, fruit snack every day. And they also wrote um, to put in a garden. So last year we put in a garden. So um, the students helped plan it. Father Mike dug the garden and... And so we, tomatoes and zucchini and cucumbers and peppers. The peppers were used by uh, not only our students, but it was used by the people who make the Briar Hill Pizza at St. Anthony's. So it, it's a whole community. It's a community garden. It's a, a community project. And uh, so many people have taken pride in that, especially the kids, that they were able to grow some. We gave them a container and beans and they took it home and watched it grow and picked beans over the summer. Mm -hmm. So it's something little like that made a big impact in their life. Well, Father Mike Swire, Cheryl Jablonski, thank you so much uh, thank for you, being Father with Corey. us today. Thank you especially for uh, the mission you provide to so many students and continuing that in Jesus' name. We thank you thank very you. much. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for being with us. Have a good day and God be with you. Spotlight has been a production of CTNY, the Catholic Television Network of Youngstown. Your program host was Father James Corda. Thirty-three million Americans have descended into poverty. And as their futures fall, so does our nation's. We are all important members of the St. Joseph of Provider School family. We come to school to learn and grow with God. We will use our talents to help ourselves and, and each other to learn to grow and show respect. Each of us will strive to be the best person we can be. We are proud to be members of the SJS family. We will succeed. Go Doesn't your child deserve the best education possible? Then you should consider a Catholic school where strong academics are offered in a safe, disciplined environment, where education is deeply rooted in the religious teachings of our Catholic faith, where graduation rates are exceptional, where outstanding teachers help your child reach his or her fullest potential in the classroom and in life. But you should consider a Catholic school for the most important reason of all. Your child is worth it.